Sometimes it feels like people are inventing products to solve very specific, not even real problems. But in the cleaning world, there are a lot of household products, just boring, regular, everyday, benign things that have extraordinary uses and applications around your home. So in this video, I'm gonna show you five of those items that have multiple uses around your home. So you're really gonna get your bang for your buck here. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already, to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you like finding extraordinary uses for ordinary things around your house. We've talked about a squeegee quite a bit on Clean My Space. It is an essential household tool. And especially since moving into this house in our master bathroom, we now have a glass panel in our shower. The squeegee has become our best friend because as I've said so many times, if you clean your shower with a squeegee after each shower, you will never actually have to clean your shower. But there are many other uses for the squeegee around the house that I'm gonna cover off today. The first one is getting pet hair off your upholstery. So if you find that your upholstery is covered in cat hair, dog hair, what have your hair, and you wanna get rid of it and you don't wanna vacuum, I hate vacuuming, so anything I can do to not vacuum, I'm gonna do. Just get a squeegee. Um, if you want a little extra hot tip, you can moisten the actual squeegee tip itself, and then you can do quick short strokes to remove all of that pet hair. It'll come up in a big clump. You're gonna be disgusted, but you're also gonna be excited because now your upholstery is clean. Another use for the squeegee is right here in the kitchen. If you are into baking and you're using a lot of space on your counter where you're throwing flour and other stuff around and you notice there's a big mess after and you're not quite sure how to corral all of it, you can use a squeegee to essentially wipe everything up into a pile and then sweep it directly into a green bin or a garbage can. You can do the same with you know general cooking spills. If you have to clean your cutting board off and you don't want stuff to get stuck in your cloth, you can do that. And the same goes for spills. If you spill something on the floor and it's massive and it's a hard floor surface, you can kind of squeegee the mess all up into one contained area and then wipe it down. And you'll notice it's much easier to clean up the spill once you've kind of squeegeed it all into the center. If you've taken a stroll down your local big box store's beauty aisle lately, you've probably seen these for sale. They are pumice stones. They are a naturally occurring stone and we typically use them, the reason they're in the beauty aisle, is for pedicures. Uh, they are great at removing dead skin off the bottom of your feet, making them nice and smooth. But they also have a lot of cleaning applications around the house. It's important to keep in mind though, pumice stones are porous, that is what's so fabulous about them, that also means that they can never be fully disinfected. So if you're going to be using them for pedicures, please have one specifically for that purpose. And then if you're going to be using them for some of the cleaning tasks that I'm about to cover, please have a separate one for each of those as well. You'll see why in a minute. First of all, we'll talk about cleaning your oven. Whether it's a stubborn stain on your cooktop or a stain in your non-self-cleaning oven that you just cannot get rid of, the pumice stone can really help you out. Now, the most important thing when you're using a pumice stone, you wanna make sure that the stone itself is wet and that the surface you're cleaning is wet. All right, get your stubborn surface ready by wetting it as well as your pumice stone and starting to buff the area in a gentle circular motion. This will help lift off any dirt grease, grime, or stubborn stains that you have otherwise not been able to get rid of. Once you've lifted that mess off with your pumice stone, you can then just wipe it clean, get rid of any residue with a microfiber cloth, and your surface should look as good as new. Now, you can also use the pumice stone to clean stubborn rings in your toilet. Yes, that is why you want a separate one. <laughs> one for toilet, one for oven. What you'll do is wet your stone and then you want to flush the water and then plunge it down the toilet bowl so that you actually have a workspace that you can scrub, if that makes sense. If it doesn't, you can always watch our How to Clean Like a Pro Toilet Edition video, which I'll link for you down below so you can see exactly how to do that. And then once you've cleared the area of water, you'll actually have the space with the stain readily available to you. You'll take your pumice stone, you'll start buffing that area in gentle circular motions, then you will give the toilet a flush, and like an eraser to a badly written out math question, you will see that stain is gone and no longer there for anyone to see or raise an eyebrow at. 
We made a video years ago about how to get rid of spider webbing or marks that get onto your dinnerware. And you can do that by simply using a paste of cream of tartar and water. Now, I was sort of dubious about this, but we tested it out and it worked so well. So I'm gonna bring that up to the top again. If you guys notice that your dinnerware is looking a little lackluster, it's got marks on it, and you're not quite sure how to get rid of them, just use this cream of tartar trick. It works like a charm. Now, another thing that I've recently tested, and I've only had to test it since moving into this house, is using a paste of simple cream of tartar and water to remove soot from a fireplace. Soot, soot, I don't know. How do you guys say it? Let me know in the comments down below. Soot to remove soup from a fireplace. Essentially, I took a toothbrush, I dipped it in some cream of tartar, sprayed a little bit of water on it, and started working in a circular motion just to lift up any of that soot and see what would come off, and it was a night and day situation. It came off immediately, and you can see that very obvious patch of where I did my cream of tartar testing in my fireplace. Not only are lemons great to clean with because they smell nice, but the oil contained in the skin of the lemon is a very powerful cleaner, as is the lemon juice itself. So by just simply cutting the lemon in half, you can do so much with it. My all-time favorite tip cleaning with lemons is getting rid of hard water spots and soap scum in the bathroom. So if you have a glass shower wall and you have ridiculously stubborn water spots that you cannot get rid of, cut a lemon in half and kind of just romantically rub the lemon over those spots and you will see after a minute or two, they start to come off. Now normally you would attack something like that, you would think with something abrasive, but of course using something abrasive would scratch the glass. So the alternative here is using something with an acidity content like a lemon that would break down that soap scum and those hard water spots. A couple of other great uses for lemons include cleaning your cutting boards. If you sprinkle salt on your cutting board, cut a lemon in half and use that as your cleaning tool. You will help not only to clean your cutting board, but to deodorize it as well. There are many other great things you can do with lemons. People have written whole books about cleaning with lemons, but a couple of other uses that I really love, cleaning your microwave, cutting a lemon in half, filling a bowl with some water, squeezing both halves of the lemon into that bowl of water, dropping the lemons in themselves, microwaving that for three minutes, letting all the moisture loosen all the crap in your microwave, and then giving it a nice wipe down. And the same goes for your garbage disposal. If you take that lemon, we're looking at a reuse here, and throw the one that you just used to clean your microwave down your garbage disposal and turn that on, that will also help clean your garbage disposal, and it gives a good second use to a lemon that's been used for cleaning. Now I do want to make mention of something here. Because Clean My Space videos are viewed around the world, not everybody pays the same price for a lemon. So here they're not so expensive, but in other parts of the world they are. Now normally I would say you can sub this in for that. In cleaning you really can't sub lemon in for another citrus fruit. It's just not going to do the same thing with cleaning. Um, of course the scent or essential oil might be a different story, but you're not going to clean a shower with an orange. All that to say, if you need some acid in your life and you can't get lemons at a reasonable price, use vinegar instead. And then of course, the microfiber cloth, the humble but incredible microfiber cloth, which has so many uses around the house, but I'm gonna cover off a few more that you might not have thought of. First of all, if you have a situation where you cannot use an abrasive tool to do cleaning, for example, an acrylic tub, you can't use an abrasive sponge to do the job. Instead of that, you can use a product like baking soda or a little bit of vinegar to get rid of any soap scum that's built up in the tub. But when you're actually scrubbing it, you can use something soft like a microfiber cloth that still has really good scrubbing power to get rid of any of that buildup and that you can use again and again and again. So rinse it off and repeat instead of, you know, using the cloth and then having to grab another one like you might if you were using a cotton rag. The next use for microfiber cloths, well, if you look at these ones, they are shaped decently enough that you might be able to put them on the bottom 
of a flat head mop instead of having to buy disposable replacement pads for flat head mops. And another one I love is using them for high and low dusting. So taking a mop pole, putting your microfiber cloth on the end of that mop pole, and then securing it with a rubber band or hair elastic so that you have a little makeshift cleaning tool whereby you don't need to reach up too high or bend down too low to get to any of those high and low dusting spots that would otherwise drive you crazy. So now you have five more everyday boring household products that have so many cleaning uses around the house. I hope that that has motivated and inspired you to get to cleaning. And that actually brings me to this week's comment question, which is, what other boring everyday household items are you able to clean with? Do you have any hacks that you can share with us, things that you use around your house that you wish other people knew about or that you're proud of. So many of you guys will send me emails or DMs about little discoveries that you made. So this is your opportunity to share them in public and let us know what your favorite cleaning hacks are for everyday boring household items down below. If you wanna see what's going on during the rest of the week when we're not cleaning, you can follow us on Instagram. I'm at Melissa Maker. Chad is at the Chad Reynolds and the two of us are at Clean My Space. Here are a couple of other videos I think you're going to love. And if you want to learn more about Maker's Clean Microfiber Cloths, you can click this button right over here. There is a button down there that lets me know you care. So click it if you liked this video and click this button right here to subscribe and begin your journey to a cleaner life. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.